All right, you guys, welcome back to some more Corpse Factory. Last episode, Noriko almost slipped that she was Corpse Girl, but instead was able to twist this around to Koji that she's just someone who has used the website before after telling him that she hadn't. So I'm not sure how why he bought that. But anyways, we're going to continue on here. Apparently, our alarm is shrieking and uh, it, it scares us awake. My eyes don't open immediately, and instead I find myself tossing and turning, trying to bury my face on my pillow. Gosh, that was me this morning. I can't have had more than two hours of sleep, and now it's already time to get up and go to work. How the hell am I going to function today? I drag my heavy body from the bed and slide into the pair of slippers resting on the floor. With a yawn and a stretch, I leave my bedroom. I stand in the kitchenette connected to the living room for a few moments, completely absent-minded. I open the refrigerator and stare blankly at the dismal contents. I know, isn't that the worst when you have an empty fridge and you're just like, oh, I'm hungry, but I don't know what to make and there's nothing in here. A small tub of peach yogurt sits on the top shelf and a half empty jug of oolong tea rests at the bottom. I mean, she doesn't really eat much though, as we've seen. I grab the yogurt peel and peel off the lid without even fetching a spoon. I simply pour a little into my mouth. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, have I ever done that? I don't think so. I mean, I, I've definitely eaten food in some weird ways, but I can't say that's one of them. I consume about half of the tiny portion of wipe my mouth before throwing the leftovers in the trash can. Gosh, you really don't eat much at all. That'll be enough to spike my energy for this morning. When you normally run on an empty stomach, and an amount, any amount of calories can work as a pick-me-up. I suppose, yeah. I guess when you don't eat hardly anything. I make a mental note to collect two or three cans of coffee from the convenience store on my way to work. That should carry me for the rest of the day. Gosh, literally lives on coffee. The rest of the early morning is spent applying makeup and getting dressed. I'm out the door at the same time as every other day. Oh boy, but is today going to be like every other day? We'll see. To stop myself from nodding off on my desk, I decide to rearrange my personal effects. Having something to focus on is a great way to fight off sleep. Unlike the other employees here, I don't tend to cut too much, or I don't tend to keep too much at my workspace, yet it still manages to feel cluttered somehow. Sounds like you're just very OCD about your your space and how you eat and things like that. Uh, next to my computer monitor, there are three little figurines I collected from the toy capsule machines. They're a set of anthropomorphic coffee cans that were released as a promotional campaign for my favorite coffee brand. And then she's really obsessed with coffee, apparently. Like, that's, that's the most she eats during her day, is those three cans of coffee. Each figure is about the size of my thumb. They're cute little things, and when you put a coin into the capsule machine, you never know which character you're going to get. So far, I managed to collect Captain Cafe Ula, uh, Lieutenant Long Black, and Madame Macchiato. If I remember correctly, there are still two more I need to get. But the capsule machine seems to be out of rotation now because they replaced it with a different series of toys. If I ever want to collect the remaining figures, I'll probably need to buy them online. Oh well, I'm not super invested in having to own all of them. I give each tiny figure a bit of dusting and set them back next to my monitor, which are all standing up straight and facing forward. Satisfied that they're tidy, I look to the small tray of drawers that sit on the other side of my monitor. I mainly just store papers and office memos in them. They're not really big enough to hold anything much larger than documents. I rummage through the drawers and discard a few old notices that aren't relevant anymore. When I'm done, I file away a couple of loose papers that have been floating around my desk for the last week. With that complete, I straight up my keyboard so it's parallel with the mouse pad. I give the keyboard a thorough dusting and then lean back in my chair to admire my work. The desk looks, looks much nicer now. A clean workspace invites a clear state of mind. Or so my coworkers would have me believe. Maybe I'll buy into that a little bit now that I can see the effects for myself. The corner of my eye catches a glimpse of a blonde hair and I turn to watch Tomoe enter the office. She nods at Shinya and she walks by his desk and continues nonchalantly towards her own workspace. Since her desk is in the line of sight, I have the perfect vantage point to watch her put her belongings down and take a seat. I feel a sudden stirring of excitement as she sits down. It's almost as if I'm anticipating something to happen. Was something supposed to happen with Tomoe today? I've, have I forgotten something important? My tired mind can't really focus on those thoughts. I try to ignore the mild surge of adrenaline that started pulsing through me when she took her seat. I distract myself by st starting up my computer and looking over the list of today's task. It looks as though I need to correct a few entries I uploaded to the company server yesterday. Uh, in my previously discarded states, possibly made a few typographical errors. Maybe. That's far. That's fair enough. I'll get to work on correcting the data. I open up a few programs and listen to the whirring of my computer tower, nearly drowned out in the clamor of the office environment. The next sound I hear 
eclipses the noise of my com of the computer and the office completely and absolutely. What's up with these flies, man? Um. Okay, a terrified streak slices through the air like a knife, leaving a deathly ringing silence in its wake. I scramble to my feet purely out of instinct, scanning for the source of the scream. I don't have to look very far before my eyes fall upon a distressed Moe, kneeling on the floor and clutching her face. Oh yeah, she put that picture in there, huh? Huh? She's on the ground next to her desk, staring down unblinkingly, her fingers white from the strain of clawing at her own head. In the sudden chaos of people rushing to her side, I somehow managed to notice that one of the drawers in her desk is wide open. Okay, good. I was hoping she didn't forget. A tired, as tired and exhausted as I am, the significance of the open drawer isn't lost on me. I immediately realized when, why my body subconsciously felt excited when Tomoe came into the office this morning. I left something in her dress drawer, something I wanted her to find. Yesterday's obsession with discovering the identity of the one who requested my death caused me to forget my rebellious strike against Tomoe. I left something in her drawer yesterday, thinking she was the one who submitted my photos to the website. Then she didn't come into work, and it completely slipped into my mind. After she confessed to requesting Akane Suromaki's death, I erased my suspicion of her being the one who targeted me, but I didn't remove the item from her from her drawer. I mean, she technically could just do that. She could go around putting that as if someone requested their death. I mean, who's gonna know? It ha all has to go through her, so she could just make them up. <sighs> yes, you are. Before I can even lurch forward from behind my desk, Tomoe turns her head to face me. Uh-oh. <laughs> She knows. She knows. Her cold, grim eyes lock onto mine, refusing to let go. A trickle of crimson. Interesting. That that word is is green. Uh, blood seeps from her scalp, where her fingernails pierced her skin during her panic scream. Swallowing my nervousness, I break eye contact with her and stare down at the flat object that was the focus of her outcry. It's a familiar photograph. I would say so. You're the one who made it, so it should be familiar. A printed image on glossy paper, traditional, old school, and just as effective as I'd hoped. Though I can't make out all the details in this distance, the composition of the photo doesn't elude my memory. Oh, so she did do her own corpse. I was, I, I asked, I think last episode, was it last episode or the episode before that? Uh, I asked which one she did. I was like curious, but I, I didn't know. It depicts my very own corpse toppled backwards over a tombstone, a body slash traces across my neck a laceration lines my stomach and a knife protrudes from my breast wow okay my black hair is a tangled mess my dark eyeliner is smeared and smudged the grimace on my face is the unmistakable mask of death noriko kurosawa stoic and unflinching in death noriko kurosawa dead atop a random tombstone in some nameless cemetery it was our yet ultimately unremarkable way to die it suits me perfectly i'm proud of my work that went into this photo the objective was to punish Tomoe for requesting my death, to create a work of art so horrific that she'd beg for forgiveness when she found me still breathing. But how was she going to play this off? Like, why would... Who would send her a picture of Noriko dead? So how is she going to play this off as it's not something she did? Very curious. I feel like this is not, not going to be good for her. But the scene playing out before me is like anything... Unlike anything I had imagined. Tomoe's face is scrunched up with hatred, the veins in her forehead threatening to burst and shower the office with saguine gore at any given second. Or sanguine. Is that what the... Has that even pronounced the word? I never know how to pronounce the word. Just, I think it's sanguine. Uh, whether or not she thinks this is some sick prank is beyond my knowledge. All I can decipher from her expression is that she is likely to strangle me given the opportunity. Well, that wouldn't be good. That would put a damper on your plans, huh? But perhaps I'm jumping ahead of myself. Why do I automatically assume that she believes I'm guilty of putting the photo in her drawer? I mean, aren't I the victim in the image? Perhaps she Who actually... The fuck is responsible for this? She howls like a wounded animal, a battered and beaten pup backed into a corner. Clutching the photo now torn from her bloody fingernails, she stands and plants her feet firmly on the floor, steadfast, stern, resolute, a bulwark of immovable fury. All eyes are upon her, the bleached blonde gal girl with an antagonizing attitude as the center of attention in the office. This photo is disgusting! Absolutely sick! Who made it? From the confused and puzzled face of the 20 or so employees huddled around, it's obvious that no one really knows what Tomoe is talking about. The photo is small, with her clutching it tightly and waving it around frantically, it's impossible for anyone to make out the detail. I'm bold enough to assume that no one else has managed to properly glimpse it yet. And maybe I can prevent our co-workers from getting a closer look if I act fast. I dart out from behind my desk and approach Tomoe. Let me see. 
Kamobi aggressively thrusts the photo towards me, and I take a cursory look at it and gasp loudly to add credibility to my acting. Adopting a fake countenance of shock, I grab Tomoe by the shoulder and pull her close to me. I bow my head against hers and we stand intimately in the middle of the crowd, forehead to forehead, our eyes fixated on one another. Okay. I, I mean, I thought you liked Aoi, but okay. I hope my beating heart isn't loud enough for Tomoe to notice as we stand next to each other. I whisper softly, my pulse quickening as I try to make my words sound urgent and confident rather than broken and anxious. Come with me. I need to talk to you. Tomoe stiff tenses and stiffens, but she murmurs something that sounds like agreement. I pull away from her and grab her wrist to lead her out of the office. As as careful as Noriko is, I, I feel like she's also very careless. Like, does anybody else get that impression? I feel like she does things like this that are really, like, that. that's kind of out of the blue, you know? Like, now that she knows that she isn't the one that requested her death, it's like, how are you supposed to play this off? And then she kind of messed up with Koji, too. Like, I don't know. I just don't feel like she's being very careful right now. She's getting kind of, um, kind of careless, and she's slacking. We exit from the throng of onlookers scratching their heads and dart towards the elevator. Shinya says nothing as we pass. I mean, this looks on with a pale face. And he's probably like, what the frick is going on? I would be, too. The elevator ride down is silent and awkward, but eventually the doors open to reveal the ground lobby floor lobby. Is she going to play this off as, like, someone's trying to kill her, maybe? We weave between the scattered couches and sculptures, making a frantic dash for the exit. I mean, she could definitely play it off as she saw the photo. Like, because obviously she knew that, like, nobody else probably could make out what's on that photo, but she knew what was on the photo. So she could just be like, oh yeah, I saw what's on the photo, like, we need to keep this hush-hush, right? We finally emerge outside into the brisk morning air. Trying hard to catch my breath, I notice that Tomoe isn't nearly as exhausted as I am. I want to chalk up my wheezing condition to a lack of sleep, but I know that's just an excuse for my poor physical fitness. Freaking same. <laughs> Tomoe is still holding the photo in her hand. She looks at it with once more in disgust and faces me with one hand on her head. You wanna tell me what the fuck this is? Look, it's difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. I wanna find out who planted this in my drawer! And look at this! She thrusts the photo at me once again. She uses the point of her thumb to indicate the timestamp printed on the bottom of the image. I mean, yeah, I guess... I'm totally forgetting. Like, she's already seen the photo. I'm sorry. Like, I was totally, like, just making it out. Like, she, she's already... She's the only one that's seen the photo besides her. So, of course, she can play this off. It's got yesterday's date on it. A photo of your dead body. As if you've already been killed. But here you stand. But I got the perfect explanation for her. The Noriko you see in front of you? Fake. You know, I'm I'm somebody else. You know? Yep, the real Noriko got killed yesterday. I'm a new one. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how that'd get you out of the situation, but sure, you could do that. The photo bears yesterday's dates, the time stamp uh, states 9.06 p.m. I marked it as such when I was under the belief that Tomoe wouldn't find it yesterday morning, or that she would find it. I wanted her to anxiously wait out, out the day until my death accompanied the rising moon. Since I didn't go down the way I planned, the confusion on Tomoe's face is now self-explanatory. that corpse girl wants you dead. What did she say? Huh? This is just like what happened to Akane Surumaki when I requested her death. The police found a photo of her own dead body on her phone when they investigated how she died. What, is this public knowledge? How did I not know this? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a big thing to not know. That, uh... They're already finding that out. I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's a really easily traceable thing. And now you've got a similar photo. Does that mean Corpse Girl is trying to kill you? Uh, but it doesn't make sense. It's already past the time it says here. And why was the photo in my desk drawer? What do I gotta do with it? I'm still reeling from the information about Akane Surumaki. The police discovered the Corpse Girl photo on her phone. Of course they did. Of course they invest they would investigate her death. It was foolish of me to assume the photo when it comes to light. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about her being a little bit careless, is like, I mean, surely you've a plan for that, right? Like, of course they're gonna find the photos. Tomoe grits her teeth and tenderly touches a finger to the bloody cut on her scalp, the place her fingernails slash in anguish. She looks at her fingertip and revulsion and sighs. Look, maybe it's my fault that Akane Surumaki ended up down the well. Maybe it's not. 
the least I can do is make sure that the fucking corpse girl doesn't come to get you as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still laugh at her voice sometimes. Ain't my friend or nothing, but sluts gotta stick it out together, right? I don't want another cold bitch on my conscience. Well, maybe you shouldn't be uh, testing that out, huh? I feel like these are the most touching words to Moe can string together. I'm somewhat flattered that she wants to protect me. Tomoe, you don't have to do anything. Because you see, I'm Corpse Girl. Yeah, I kind of do, you know? You comforted me a little when I came to you about the dead skank. Made me feel like I wasn't totally to blame, yeah? <laughs> you might not be as much of a psycho as I thought. Might be a heart beating behind that flat chest. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Unexpectedly, the brash and brazen girl beams at me brightly. I'm under 24-hour surveillance. Corpse girl's going to have to crack my skull open before she goes sticking her fingers into yours. Tomoe, really, that's not necessary. I can't figure out a way to convey that I'm not actually in danger. Well, immediately, da immediate danger at any rate. It's true that there is someone out there who wants me dead badly enough to have requested through the website, but as far as the threat of Corpse Girl coming to get me goes, I'm perfectly safe. I resign myself to simply staring blankly at Tomoe, the girl I hold so much disdain for. I know I should choose my next words carefully. Tomoe is prone to violent outbursts at even the best of times. Oh, frick. Um... Gosh, we're getting so many choices now. It's like, I don't know how this affects branches or whatever. I, need you to, I don't need you to protect me. I mean, do we want to be mean to her after she started being nice to us? Thanks, I'll be fine on my own. I'd feel better with you looking after me. There's three options. I'm like, mm. I feel like the first two are kind of similar, but I feel like the second one's going to be, um, it's going to kind of bleed into this last one. Like, oh, yeah, I'll be fine on my own, and then she's going to insist, right? But if we tell her to, like, F off, she's going to leave. Like, she's, she's going to be like, okay, well, I thought we were going to stick together. Mm. I don't feel like having her around would be good, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll go with the second one, okay? We're going to see how that goes. Thanks, but I'll be fine on my own. Nah, that's bull. You're a delicate little thing. Yep. So it's up to me to look after you. Okay, so that, that went exactly how I thought it was going to go. Seriously, I'll be okay. I don't think Corpse Girl is going to come after me. Oh, yeah. And what makes you so sure? Uh, it's a long story. But look, you said it yourself. The time and date on the photo have already passed, right? Huh? Oh, yeah. I guess so. What's so... Well, I can't imagine someone coming to kill me now. I mean, the corpse in the photo is clearly dead at 9.06 p.m. last night. But I'm standing right in front of you. I'm pretty alive right now. Uh, you're not really convincing me. I mean, I don't totally believe this corpse girl person really exists, but still. I mean, what more evidence do you want? You literally request someone's death and they died. Something or other killed Akane Surumaki. Pretty sure it wasn't suicide, what with the photo and all. I mean... Yeah, but isn't that prove your point? Like, she is a real thing? Corpse Girl is a real thing? Like, I'm, I'm so confused. So, since you got one of them photos too, I think it's best we hang. At least for a day. Let me keep you safe. You're really stubborn, you know that? Oh yeah, but I've been called worse. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Hmm. Why'd you think the photo was in my drawer? Did Corpse Girl get her desks mixed up? And like, shouldn't it have just been texted to you? I... I... don't know. Like, does she really not know? I feel like some of the people in this game are just like... Okay, sounds good to me. You got me convinced. <laughs> Ugh, this shit really fucks with my head. Let's just get back to work, yeah? I mean, I guess from our perspective, we know all of this stuff, so it's like, oh, of course it's obvious, but I, I mean, I guess to them, it's like pretty, pretty new and confusing, but it's like, wh why would she send you a, a photo in person? Like, that makes no sense. It's like, surely you, you know, like, okay, corpse girl must be around me, right? And, it, and, and I feel like Noriko is very suspicious, but we'll see. We'll see if she figures it out. 
Because I have a feeling someone's going to find out. Like, someone's going to find out, and uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems. I'm really surprised it's not Shinya of all people. I feel like Shinya was going to figure this out pretty quick, but there's still time. Momi turns to head back into the building with Soft Shore. She faces me and hands me the photo. Yeah. Better you have it than me. She enters the office and leaves me standing in the cool morning air. Also, it doesn't feel like Noriko was really, like, too worried about it. I mean, that's pretty much what she said. Like, hey, I have a reason for not being worried about it. But if if she was really, like, that concerned about it, don't you think, like, Tomoe would have been, like, more insistent about things? I feel like she was pretty nonchalant about it. Uh, looking down at the photo, it's pretty clear that it's me in the image. I suppose it would be best to delete this evidence. I shred the photo carefully, making sure to completely destroy any of the defining features in the image. With the photo completely ripped beyond recognition, I toss it into a nearby bin and enter the office building. We still do need to figure out who uh, requested our death, though. I feel like it's got to be someone who knows who we are. Somebody. I'm dealing with Tomoe, and the rest of the day goes by... A oh, excuse me. After dealing with Tomoe, the rest of the day goes by without incident. I'm thankful mainly due to how exhausted I am from lack of sleep. When I finally get home, I crash on the couch and watch the sun vanish from the sky. It's late, but I can still make out most. I can still make the most of the night if I pull myself up from the couch. With great effort, I manage to stand and make my way to the kitchen to brew a cup of tea. In my mind, I run through a list of things I should do during my free time tonight. I could check my website's request, take a bath, or maybe go back to reading *Strange Flower*. Whatever I end up doing, I'm just relieved the day is over. I wonder if we're going to have the option of choosing what we want to do. With a steaming cup of green tea in hand, I retreat to my room and leave the outside world to continue turning without me. Okay, so we're Wednesday morning, June 3rd. Another dull morning in the office. The chatter of people talking on the phone, the humming of the air conditioner, the tapping of fingers against keyboards. If Bennett had music to drown out the white noise, I'd probably go mad from being exposed to it every day. I don't know how everyone else deals with it. Thanks to a good night's rest, I've been able to work diligently so far. I've completed a few tasks already, but there is still a lot more work to do. As I continue to pulverize my keyboard with thin, brittle fingers, I look over the office floor to see who's around. Shinya sits at his desk, his expression scrunched up in concentration, and he absentmindedly scratches his face with the blunt end of a pen. Turning my gaze over, I observe the back of Tomoe's head as she works attentively at her computer. She hasn't said anything to me since we arrived at the office this morning, because I know that she's not the one who requested my death, I feel more at ease around her. With a photo of my own corpse destroyed, I could put yesterday's unplanned events behind me. I don't know. So Shinya didn't really say anything yesterday, which is a little bit odd to me. I feel like Shinya maybe would have said something. He would have wanted to see the photo. Would have been a little bit more curious. Um, It's entirely possible he requested our death. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised. I, I've said before, I feel like there's more to his character than they're showing. Or else, I'm not really sure who else would have requested our death. I don't think it was Koji. Koji, like, just recently met us. Um, it's entirely possible that he was just testing it out to see if it worked, but that would have been kind of extreme, and how would he have gotten our picture? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of suspicious of Shinya. Shinya would have been in the position to get our photo, huh? I, I think he would have had access to the database to get our employee ID photo. And if it wasn't Tomoe, like, he's just the next person I'd suspect. You need to be more careful in the future. Yeah, you freaking do. That's what I've been saying this whole episode. Forgetting that I planted a photo like that in Tomoe's desk drawer was an oversight I can't afford to repeat. You need to be clever, calculated, cunning. Warp Girl's ambitions required me to be at peak performance at all times. I can't go messing up like that again. I'm lucky that no one else was dragged into the whole mess. Imagine if if I did something so stupid when trying to kill a real victim, I would have ruined the entire operation. Taking a deep breath, I clap my cheeks softly with both hands. From now on, I'm going to be truly focused uh, when carrying out my plans. All I need to do is wait for the next victim to come through the website. I'm ready for it. Finding out the identity of whoever requests my own death shouldn't be my top priority. I don't know about that one. I think that should be, but that's just me. I'm immune to Corpse Girl's wrath, of course, so unless someone decides to come at me with a knife, I'm perfectly safe. I'll check the website request this evening. As soon as I get home, it's too risky to, to try and access it while at work. With newfound resolve, I nod to myself and look ahead to the end of the day. Okay, at least she's not doing it at work. I feel like that's a terrible idea. There's cameras, there's people. 
A flickering notification on my laptop screen prompts a wicked grin to split my face in two. One new request. I don't waste any time before opening up the details of my request. My heart begins to pound and I feel the welcome rush of adrenaline flooding through my body. Today at 10.55 a.m. Downloading the image attachment. Interesting. My eyes widen at the sight of the uploaded photo. Two people, two identical women. Twins, identical twins at that. The woman on the left is circled in red. She is obviously the requested victim, but without knowing them personally, it's impossible to distinguish between the two. Both have the same stunning features, lustrous hair, and contagious smiles. I mean, they look different to me. I don't know what you're talking about. But um, they, they, they are very similar. This truly is an interesting request. I immediately jumps to the conclusion that one twin wants the other dead. That's not on the only possibility, but I like to think it's the case. It makes it exciting. This type of request only serves to reinforce my resolve. I can't wait to start gouging out the eyes victim. She will leave behind a truly beautiful corpse. As I wait for my secret weapon in the database of the deceased to load up, my thing phone tingles beside me on the couch. It's a noise message from none other than Kojiro. Hey, you there? About last time. Hi. Hey, that guy. Edgy Hanada. Gone today. Is that so? Where did he go? Cremated. Family didn't come to collect him. Limited space. You know how it is. I don't know why Kojiro decided to tell me this. I suppose he still thinks I requested Edgy's death, so... I see. More names. What? Want me to look up more names? Corpse Girl's victims. Sorry, I don't have any more names for you. Shame. Tell me if you request more deaths. Oh, and... Do you know her identity? Who, Corpse Girl? Uh, no. Sorry, I don't know who she is. Okay. Is it you? <laughs> I mean... I don't feel like Kojiro is like a, a dumb guy. Like, ho hopefully he's smart enough to realize why. Why would you know this? No, it's not me. I'm not as clever as all that. How does she kill? I'm not sure. Uh, what do you know? LOL. All I know is the victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Everyone knows that. My dog knows that. <laughs> it's her calling card. You got a request fulfilled. Tell me more. I don't know what else to tell you. Lame. Okay. BTW. I saw the photo. The photo. Ed Shihanada. The photo on his phone. The calling card. No? Huh? How did Kojiro see it? Sure, he deals with dead bodies, but surely personal possessions are removed from the deceased before the end of the morgue. Need to play it cool here, not invite any more suspicion to myself. I'm talking about the photo of the corpse girl supposedly sends her victims. Funny thing was, was definitely the guy, but photo didn't match cause of death. But it didn't match the cause of death. I remember crafting Edgy Hanada's photo, of course. It wasn't all that long ago. I used a base image of a corpse with dismembered legs hanging over a power line. It was a memorable image, after all. It made a fearsome sight, but it's not something that could easily be replicated by suicide or by murder, for that matter. So I never suspected Edgy to wind up looking like the photo. But from what I read from the obituary, he died in a traffic accident. He must have been driving, or he was a pedestrian. Either way, it was like a collision with a vehicle. For starters, Katavir still had both legs. No legs in the photo. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I haven't seen the photo you're talking about. You haven't? Interesting. The corpse girl doesn't share with the requester. Hang on. Okay. So only the victim sees the photo. Here. Oh, interesting. He's actually sharing it with us. Kojiro shares a photo in the chat. I like how he just casually has this information and he's sharing it. I feel like that's a total, like, breach of everything his job stands for, but sure. Uh, I'll take it. That's pretty gruesome. Sure enough, it's a snapshot of the corpse photo I produced for Eya Chihanada. He must have copied it from the victim's photo. Uh, the photo from Corpse Girl compared to this. Another photo is shared in the chat. This one I haven't seen before. It's Edgy Hanada's true corpse, sprawled forward in the driver's seat of a wrecked car. Seeing a genuine corpse photo doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. After all, I've spent countless hours trawling through the database of the deceased. I mean, you literally use a real photo, don't you? To make them? So, of course you have. I've seen more than my fair share of destroyed lives. There's not much blood in this photo. It's kind of lame compared to the gorgeous rendition of his death that I lovingly crafted. Still not entirely evident what led to Edgy's car collision. This very well could have been a genuine accident. Especially if he got a photo of him, like, supposedly in a car accident, and then, like, I feel like that would give you so much anxiety while driving. For my own ego, I have to at least pretend that Corpse Girl had a hand in it. Thoughts? 
The real death doesn't match Corpse Girl's photo at all. What do you think that is? Also, the interesting thing is, from the police perspective, they're going to start seeing photos that look very edited. Like, if the police officer or whoever is investigating, like, noticed, hey, I had a case like this not too long ago that looked like this, but this isn't the person that it happened to. They're going to realize, like, hey, these are edited photos. Like, someone's, like, crafting these. These aren't, like, real things, right? Also, they're going to put it together quickly because they're going to realize the way they died and uh, the, the way that they died in the photo is different, too, just like we're talking about right now. So I feel like the police are probably already on to this. Uh, I wonder what they're doing about it, but we haven't really heard anything um, besides the fact that they, they looked at uh, the phone and, and things like that. So interesting. I wonder where this is going to lead to. I feel like this isn't going to go on very long with uh, how much uh, steam she's getting, you know? Like, people are starting to notice this. I feel pretty clever and manipulative by putting the question on Kojiro. I want to lessen the suspicion of my true involvement as much as possible. You're asking me? Well, some theories. Corpse Girl's photo is a scare tactic, nothing more, but don't know where photo comes from. She convinces the victim to kill themselves. What the hell? How could his very first theory be right on the money? Just who is this guy? I mean, I just don't feel like it's, like, incredibly hard to figure that out. Uh... Obviously, I'm saying this from the perspective of somebody who already knows all this, but I don't know. That's what. What do you guys think? Do you think it's really hard to figure this out? Like, do you think like she's gonna get caught quickly, or do you think it's gonna go on for a while? I I don't know. I just feel like she's been pretty careless so far. Uh, just more recently. Before that, though, like when she first started, she was like burning phones and doing all that. Like that's all good stuff that would have like made sure she never got caught. But now I'm like, mm, she's getting involved with people at work and they're getting suspicious. This guy's getting suspicious. Is he stalking me or something? Does he actually know the truth? Corpse Girl comes after victims, but a genuine accident happened first. And she had not died before she got to him. The second theory is off the mark, but I can see why he came to that conclusion. Regardless, this is the theory I want him to believe. I think the second theory is most likely. Why would someone kill themselves from seeing a photo? I mean, I asked the same question too, but uh, I don't know. That's just how it, how it goes, apparently. Doubting my own methods of sleep uh, like this leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I know, she's like trying to downplay herself like to other people. It's really interesting to watch. Not that simple. Photo is personal and time-stamped, adds urgency, realism. Could be effective, especially in someone anxious or gullible. He's right, of course. Although causing death in this manner was never my intention when I first started Corp Trove's website, it's a possibility that this did occur to me when Mary Hatsuno died. Wait a minute, how did you even get these two photos? Now she asks. Police on scene like to share. More morbid, the better. Dead guy with corpse photo on his phone fits the bill. Uh, they sent me both photos. We played Spot the Difference. Yeah, th that's what I'm saying. I never knew the police could be this respectful to the dead. I feel like that's a total breach of what they're allowed to do. They're not supposed to be sharing photos like that. It's very ironic coming from her, and she she recognizes that. Well, I can't really talk at the very least. I'm not in that line of work. But still, it's it's she's not wrong to call them out on that. Like they're supposed to be the good guys, right? Like they're supposed to be doing their job and not be these disgusting people but they're doing just as disgusting things as she is almost anyway coffee <laughs> so now that we've looked at some dead bodies together you want to go out for some coffee you know i'd like to take you out sometime <laughs> unbelievable this guy wants to meet up and grab coffee and this conversation really gave him the feeling that i'm interested in him does he think we bonded over discussion of dead bodies <laughs> apparently I'm about to tell him no, but some part of me hesitates and halts my fingers. Kojiro has connections, the morgue, the police. It's not inconceivable that he might be a useful tool in the future. Hmm. Okay, I see where this is going. She's gonna use him. I think she's gonna be up front and be like, yeah, I'm Corpse Girl. Yeah, what would you like to know? And uh, I think she's gonna use him as, as like a source of like making this whole thing work. I think he's gonna be a little bit disappointed at that, like, hey, oh, you're just Corpse Girl and nothing really special about you besides the fact that you're like psychotic but i think he's i think he's gonna play along because he seems like someone who's interested enough in that kind of stuff that he would um he would go along with it 
and he's freaking he's sharing photos of and laughing with the police of dead bodies so obviously he's a little bit twisted uh, let's let's see how this goes let, that's what i think is gonna happen this stage i'm about 80 percent sure he doesn't know my true identity i feel like he's gotta be suspicious on the other hand i get the impression that even if he knew who i really am he'd only be impressed okay good see that it's going the way i think if that's the case to gamble it could be beneficial it could lead me to being caught out I might even get arrested for my involvement with the three devs though is what i'm doing really illegal i would say if you were put in a court yes i would say they would probably yeah but i don't think a jury would take my status why i have to err on the side of caution all times yeah i think like this is very morally wrong and it's leading to people dying and it's happened multiple times so i feel like I feel like you would get tried. Okay, let's meet. I type the words and hit send before I have any more second thoughts. Might be a fatal mistake, but I'm, if I'm clever enough, I can wrap him around my finger and utilize his connections. Cool. Message you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> but Rose status immediately changes to offline. I rest my phone on the couch and look back to the laptop screen in front of me. The smiling, beautiful faces of two identical women stare back at me. That's right, I was about to start working on this most interesting request. I still have plenty of time before I need to get to sleep. With this thought in mind, I set about my task in high spirits. Ooh, it's this photo. They had this in the demo, but like we didn't really have much context for it, so it's very interesting seeing it now. Uh, the tiny balcony jutting out from the side of my apartment is nothing like it was advertised in the real estate listing. Of course, they probably... Uh, made it look way better. When I first saw this misleading photo, I thought it would be spacious and bright, an open-air hideaway that I could use to get some fresh air and improve my health. I wanted to set up a tiny garden and grow some plants, nothing that required a lot of work, but something that could occupy my spare time. In reality, the balcony is a depressing amalgamation of steel and concrete. It stops away any desire to stand upon it. <laughs> wow. You know, for someone who does, like, such disgusting and horrible things you know you would think that she would maybe enjoy that but she's like no i still want like a nice garden i want a nice little space to get away you know you know even even me who's a psycho needs a little bit of like time to get some fresh air and stuff it's like okay i dressed in the eternal shadow of the surrounding buildings and manages to catch the sun's rays for about four minutes every day wow four minutes it's an understatement to say I wasn't disappointed when I ventured out upon, upon it for the first time. I suppose if nothing else is a good vantage point for looking out over the city, but that's the only positive thing I have to say about it. Yeah, that does look pretty depressing. You got like a, a fence here, and you got like, are those, are those part of like the air conditioning system maybe? Uh, as I stand here with my back against the railing, calmly sipping a lukewarm mug of green tea, I breathe in a heavy sigh. I should be at the office. I should be tapping away at a keyboard getting through the backlog of work that has accumulated this week. Set him here at home, tired and strained, wearing thin at the seams. I called him the sick this morning. I don't know if my superior bought the lie, but he did tell me to stay home and feel better. So that's what I've been trying to do. It's my own fault I feel this way. It's my own fault that I stayed up until 4 a.m. again. I know that the lack of sleep exacerbates my condition. I know that skipping meals and refusing to take medication makes me feel this way. Uh, I wonder what kind of medication she's supposed to be on. I know that I do this to myself. I know, I know, I know, I know. It just seems like maybe she's a little bit mentally ill. I mean, I would assume most people who are psychotic killers would be considered mentally ill of some kind. I don't feel like most people just go out and uh, send send fake looking photos of people dead to them. You know, that's not really a normal thing, but uh, each their own. But this is me. This is what I do to myself and I try to take on each day. This is the way I stretch myself thin for no reason other than because some days I don't want to do better. Gosh, now this game's getting real. Now this just sounds like she's depressed. And it's like, you don't have to be a psycho to be depressed, okay? Like, I, I feel like most people probably feel depressed at some point in their lives, especially our generation now. Um, I mean, I don't even know what generation of people I'm talking to. But I'm, I'm 25, so if you're around my age, you've probably at some point in your life been depressed. And, you know, that's just kind of how it is. And it, it's sad to say that. It's not like, you know, everyone has, like, a great life and everything all the time. I just want to be. I want to stay up late and work on Corpse Girl's request. My body's need for sleep doesn't come before my ambitions. 
I would say most people have something that maybe they're passionate about and want to spend more time on. I wouldn't say it's um, something like that, but you know, it's good to have passions. It's good to want to stay up late working on something you're that you're excited about or proud of. I only want to eat when necessary because when I'm slim, I look beautiful. I want to be beautiful just like her. Okay, now this just... <laughs> now this just sounds like you're going back to your eating disorder. She's got lots of lots of things listed here. I want to skip my medication because taking the same pills every day is a hassle. Inexpensive, and I question whether I really need them anymore. I feel like that's every person that like is taking pills for a while and that's like depressed. They'll always be like, ah, I don't really need to take these. Are they really doing anything? It's like... Yes, generally they, they are doing something, <laughs> but that doesn't mean doesn't mean just because you're taking medication you won't get depressed sometimes. Like that, there I don't think there's any medication out there that'll like completely prevent you from ever feeling depressed ever. I can just stay at home like this. I don't need a medication. I even came out to the balcony that counts as being outside. Sure. Why do I need to take the pills? It's true that when I skip a few days, I end up like this. I try to convince myself I'm fine, that I'm fixed, like I was some broken thing that needed. That has been magically repaired, and I end up staying outside or inside all day with the curtains shut, my eyes locked in a scream. Uh, I don't care how much medication you're taking, that will still make you depressed. Like you do need to go outside, and and, and I know I'm saying that to a bunch of people who like visual novels, but uh, okay, that sounds mean. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just. Being outside helps. Like, any healthy person probably needs a little bit of outside time. I'm not saying you'll be outside all day. But uh, even for me, like, I know when I'm inside and I'm, I'm just playing games or, you know, taking care of my child all day and I don't go outside enough, like, I get cranky. I get a little bit depressed. Like, you, you got to have some outside time. I know that when I stay on top of my medication, I can go to work in the park and the library without a second thought. I can get on the train and not worry about strangers breathing on me or touching me. Well, it sounds like this medication works for you, then. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I would... I mean, obviously, I'm just reading and self-diagnosing, but uh, it sounds like maybe she has some OCD, uh, anxiety, uh, probably depression, because I feel like anxiety and depression kind of go hand in hand. Uh, I'm not saying everyone who's depressed has anxiety or everyone has anxiety is depressed, but I feel like a lot of the times they're, they're, they're within range of each other. Uh, at least from personal experience. And what else would I say? I mean, she's definitely a psycho. I mean, that that's definitely something that does nothing to do with depression and anxiety, but that's, that's a whole other issue she's got. And then she's got an eating disorder. Lots, lots of stuff she's got going on. I mean, and this is stuff I feel like a lot of people have. Like, this isn't like some crazy uncommon thing. Like, this is pretty normal for some people. Um... I haven't had an eating disorder or anything like that, but definitely depression and anxiety. Uh, maybe small amount of OCD. I wouldn't say much, though. I can go to a convenience store and leisure. I look around. I even went to the restaurant last week and read a book while eating dinner, and no one tried to cut, cut me or abduct me. Oh, so she's worried about that. And no one tried to strangle themselves in front of me in Yuriko. And I really go out and do normal things because of some tiny pills that a doctor said I need. I don't know. I think for some people it helps. It really does. Or can I do these things because I'm actually better now? Mm. Why not both? Why can't you be better and still take the pills until your doctor says, hey, let's let's try cutting them down or, or cutting you off and see how you do. Maybe I was never unwell in the first place, not irrational, just cautious, careful, concerned. Yes sure but um i don't know if you're worried about people breathing on you in public and stuff and like being around people like makes you anxious like i feel like that's got to be anxiety so that's like more than just normal i guess i realize that my mug is completely empty when uh i bring it to my lips and taste nothing but the slightly waxy unpleasant sensation of smudged lipstick well i've been outside for long enough anyways i'll go inside since it's getting late Plus, I have the feeling that someone on the street below has been watching me is waiting to climb up to my balcony. Yeah, like, that's that's anxiety. Like, if you're feeling like someone's going to, like, constantly come after you, that's totally anxiety. I enter my apartment and set the mug aside and retreat into my bedroom. I do like this, because I feel like we're getting to know Noriko more. I I'm sorry, I'm, like, I'm adding a lot of my own personal, like, 
I'm trying to diagnose her, I guess. And it's like, eh, I'm not a doctor. So don't, don't let me diagnose nothing. But uh, I'm just trying to have a better understanding of what like she's trying to tell us as the viewer. It definitely feels like she's got a lot of mental issues going on. A lot of um, just mostly I'm hearing anxiety. Um, maybe a little bit of depression. I said an eating disorder. She's got that going on as well. Uh, she, she seems to put on a lot of makeup too. And that kind of makes me think like maybe she's not super self-confident maybe she has a little bit of um what, what's that word i'll come back to it i answered my apartment set the mug aside and retreat into my bedroom my phone is where i left it sitting face up and begging for my undivided attention i snatch it up unlocking the screen i'm greeted by the last web page i left open it's my custom-made news alert for obituaries from tomorrow morning i'll be anxiously awaiting news of my latest victim's fate i timestamp the photo of tomorrow's date june 5th 9.01 a.m. The unlucky twin has already received the photo. I sent it out earlier today. After sending a photo, I always hide the burner phone out in the unused shed behind my apartment building. Getting the phone into the shed this morning was rather difficult. I had to cover my, uh, my face and hands with small clothes I had until... And I waited until nobody was in sight before dashing as fast as I could. It took me a good 10 minutes to collect myself inside the shed before I could rush back to my apartment and lock the door behind me. I don't think anyone tried to follow me. However, I know I'm going to need to retrieve the photo again tomorrow and dispose of it. I'll check for a reply from the victim, of course. Not like they ever reply. Then I'll destroy the sim and discard the phone like I always do. It might be difficult to go out there to the shed again. On top of that, I really should go to the office. Oh, and there's one more thing I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Kojiro wants to meet for coffee. I'm not so deluded to think that I can pull off all those escapades tomorrow in my current state. I resign myself to reaching for the bottle of medication on my dresser. Maybe another week of taking... These pills won't be so bad. They tend to increase my appetite, which is really annoying. It's constant struggle to try and figure out the hunger that tears at my stomach. It doesn't help that they wreak havoc on my libido. I never know what to expect. Sometimes I can look at these photos of Aoi on my phone and feel absolutely nothing. Other times I can simply be scrolling through noise and standing on the train and feel an overwhelming urge to explode. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I, I do know, like, medication like that can mess with you, though. It, it'll mess with you, like, in that way, too. I do my best to dismiss my doubts and fears as I swallow two of the tiny tablets. I follow up with a sip of water from the bottle kept next to my bed, and I fight the urge to retch. I'll take a shower to freshen up. After that, I should curl up in bed and read. I need to conserve my strength for tomorrow, so an early night is in order. Maybe tomorrow's the day I'll finally be better. So this is Friday 5th. Where the hell were you yesterday? Friday the 5th. That's actually today. That's the day I'm playing this. It is literally June 5th today. <laughs> Did you miss me? Nah, just glad you haven't bit the dust yet. That's so sweet. <laughs> I can't take her sometimes. <laughs> oh, he leans in closer to me almost uncomfortably, oh, so. Have you had any trouble with court? girl nope i think i'm in the clear hmm. well i guess the time marked on the photo has long passed maybe you really are safe i feel like that just makes her look so suspicious though if she doesn't die yeah <laughs> thanks though huh? thanks for what for thinking of me yeah shut up tony's face is going red with embarrassment okay that bothers me it, it says red but it's green unplayable game one out of five stars. Despite our differences and interactions regarding Crimson, or sorry, I was thinking of Crimson. I should probably just. I had the I had the thought, and then I was like, oh, I'm not gonna say it, and then I just go and say Crimson as I'm trying to read Corpse Girl. I was thinking uh, when they said Crimson, I believe it was green too, so it wasn't wasn't red like you would think of Crimson, right? They're not labeling these colors correctly. Running uh, Corpse Girl have both helped us bond a little. I'm not counting on Tomoe and I, and I have having a lasting friendship. Even just quiet peace might be expecting too much. I think it's in Tomoe's nature to want to pick fights with people, regardless of whether she's close to them or not. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up quarreling again, no matter how much we learn to respect I'm at my each desk other. If you need me, but don't bother me, you know. Okay. She waves and leaves that cryptic statement in the air behind her. I return my attention to my computer and mark a few tasks on my list as completed. The next person to waddle up to my desk and interfere with my work is Shinya. You weren't in yesterday? Nope. Are you well? Yep. Okay. Um, 
I've been meaning weird to interaction. speak to you about Sato. Okay. Ali? Yes, um... The thing is, I'm kind of in deep water because of her not showing up to work. And then resigning immediately. Ah, uh, shit. I was supposed to talk to you about that, actually. It kind of slipped my mind. Oh, right. I'm sorry, Shinya. It's my fault, really. I hassled you to get Ali a job. No, no. I didn't exercise due diligence. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever heard of like somebody not coming in physically and then getting a job. Like you should definitely come in and at least like see the person. I feel like if I was an employer, I would want to know what they look like and I need their information too. It's not like you can just hire somebody nowadays without like doing a background check. Maybe if you're like a small business, but this is a giant banking company. Like are they really not going to vet her or like check into her at all? I really should have made her come in for an interview. I should have spoken to her myself to see if her heart was really in it. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a problem on his end, too. Like, either the higher-ups or him, somebody should have done more work. Hmm. When you put it that way... I'm not trying to be callous, but what he said makes sense. Listen, you couldn't have known it, but now he struggles a bit day to day. I'll just say she has some anxiety issues and leave it at that. Anxiety, huh? Don't tell anyone I said that. I was under the impression she's been doing a lot better, but maybe I was wrong. Huh, that's a little bit funny coming from you. I think you have the same issues. And uh, Aoi has a much more noticeable issue. She's being sexually harassed and um, has deluded herself into thinking she can't do anything about it. I guess we all have our hidden struggles, right? Amen. I will agree with that, Shinya. I know everybody has something going on. Even the people you look around, you're like, oh, they have the perfect life, you know, maybe they have money, maybe they have a nice job, maybe they have a, you know, a significant other, and they look happy. It's like, no, nope, everybody has struggles. Maybe some are more worse than others, but everyone has something going on in their life that's causing them stress, or, or this or that. Nobody's life is perfect. Right. Only he knew. Then again, maybe Shinya struggles too. Maybe dating Tomoe is his help, is his cry for help. Maybe he's gonna snap one day and come to the office with a knife. <laughs> okay, that's pretty bold. But uh, I do suspect that there's something going on with him. So maybe, maybe he'll discover Corpse Girl's website and request Kotomi Ida's death in retaliation for ending his career. Interesting. Okay, he could. Maybe he's the one who requested our death. Like I said, I, I have a suspicion it was him, but I'm not sure about that. I could be wrong. I can't read this guy as well as I initially thought. For the longest time, I was under the impression he had a crush on me, so what would I do? Anyway, I hope Sato feels better soon. Maybe she'll find a job that suits her one day. Maybe. Uh, say, seeing as we're friends now and all, would you mind if I ask you a, uh, personal question? Hmm, this isn't good. That depends on what it is. It's related to, uh, <laughs> intercourse? Never mind. He, there's no way he's the killer. There's no way he requested our death. Look at this guy. <laughs> well, my face scrunches up at the word. I don't like the direction this car series is heading in. Uh, shouldn't this be something you talk to your girlfriend about? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, uh, you're right. But I can't actually speak to her about it. You're really the only other friend. Shinya's face takes on a dark expression that's more depressing than what he just said. I feel bad for the guy. Um, well, what's the question? I don't know. Does anyone feel like it's kind of hard to... Hmm. I might mess with the, the, the sound a little bit. Um, is that okay if I turn that down, guys? Like, you can be okay? I just feel like it's a little... Like, the voice is a little bit over the... Like, just barely over the music. Oh. If, hypothetically speaking, if someone pressures you into, uh, you know? Sex. His face turns red in an instant. Or green. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. That. If someone pressures you into it and you really don't want to do it, what should you do? Talk to them about it. Just be upfront with your feelings. Guys, we're better than this, okay? 
If if someone is asking you to do something you don't want to do, tell them. It's like, okay. Especially if you're an adult. Like, okay, if, if your parents ask you to do something and you're under 18, okay. You know, that's a little bit different. But if you're like a grown adult, you live by yourself, and you have like a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend who wants you to do something you want to do, you tell them. You, you're an adult. They have to, there has to be consent for these things. You, don't let someone pressure you into doing something you don't want to do. Say no. Firmly and loudly. No one should make you do things you don't want to do. Yes, Snorko. Absolutely. I agree. <sighs> yes. Ilama Answer didn't give Shinya the comfort he is obviously seeking. Is Tomoe pressuring you into going all the way? No, uh, of course not. She would never. I... <sighs> My guy, don't don't sit here and, and give me this BS. T tell me how it is. Is she is she pressuring you? Obviously, this is who you're talking about. Never mind. It was foolish of me to bring up this topic. I just feel bad now, because it's like, he, he, he just feels like... He doesn't know what to do. I'm really sorry, Noriko. Please, forgive my lack of professionalism. Shinya bows to me deeply, his face parallel to the floor. Uh, I mean, not that Noriko is the most caring person in the world, except for when it comes to Aoi. But like, I don't know. She needed to, to do something to cover him there. Like, just be real with him. Like, you need... She she said the right thing. I feel like that was the right answer. Like, yes, you need to say no means no and, and all that. But he needed a little bit more comfort there. Like, you needed to appeal more to him. I feel like he was just really unsure of himself. Quickly turns and scuffs away before I get a chance to say anything else. What was all that about? Could Tomoe be pressuring him? I wouldn't put it past her, but something doesn't feel right. She seems really smitten with him. Would she really push him like that? Yes. Yes. Uh, I feel like that's the kind of person she is, but she, she comes off very strong. And she's like, oh, why don't you just do it? You know, she seems like that kind of person. So I have no doubt that that would be the case. Maybe it's guilt from not being able to prevent his career from going down the toilet, but I feel like I should try and do something to help him. I watch Shinya get on the elevator once the double doors close. I get up from my desk and scoot over to Maui's hey, workstation. Can I have a minute? Uh, this is weird. Normally I come to bother Yo. Yeah, sorry. Have you and Shinya ever gone all the way? Huh? We've only been together for, what, a week? You think I'm some sort of slut? Hey, don't answer that! <laughs> Look, not that it's your business, but... No, we haven't. Shinya's sweet. He's old-fashioned, you know. He wants to really get to know me before we go down that road. Okay, then why is he mentioning this? Is he with somebody else? And I'm happy to wait. The last few guys I dated only ever wanted one thing from me. And that gets old real fast, you know? Hmm. Okay, I believe you. Why are you asking me anyway? Did she just say something to you? No, I was curious, that's all. <laughs> you think we're real friendly now, don't you? Well, I don't mind some girl talk. She's all happy about it now. She's like, oh, okay, you want to ask me these kind of questions? Sure, we're friends, yeah. Let's have some girl talk. Come talk to me anytime. <laughs> Thank you, I'll do that. Oh. Tomoe waggles her fingers in a goodbye wave and I return to my desk. If I take Tomoe out of word, which I find myself doing increasingly often, then she's, then she's trying to... She's not trying to get Shinya to do anything he's uncomfortable with. Someone else is pressure... Who? How many girls does this dude have? The guy admitted to me only today that his only friends are Tomoe and myself, so who is he talking about when he brought up the subject? That's curious. Very curious. Alright. I'm gonna end it here. Yeah, y'all y'all are mad, huh? You're like, frick, he's ending it here. But just when we're about to have this conversation at the, at the cafe, this is gonna be a good conversation. That's why I'm ending it here. We're about at the hour mark, and I want to make sure I have time to uh, to cover this whole thing. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a, a little bit more theories today. And apparently she hasn't received an alert for the obituary. But that could change. I mean, she usually gets an alert. Just kind of randomly. But, uh... Interesting. So Shinya's getting pressured to do the deed with somebody who is not Tomoe. Which is curious. Like, who else is this guy with? Um... My only other guess. Because I don't know who in the world other that he would know is maybe that one is what is her name kotome ida is that his boss 
maybe something crazy like that maybe he's getting pressured like hey you gotta like do some stuff with me and maybe i'll i'll help you climb the rank after your big blunder um with aoi that's my other guess because i don't know who else it would be unless it's like some crazy off the wall person i have no idea but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave you guys with that how does that sound uh next episode we are going to be covering the our little chat with koji I think that's going to be really good. So I want to make sure I save that for the start of next episode because I think that'll be awesome. But uh, anyways, guys, hope you're enjoying this and I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great one.